during this uh, travel is that you have to be open. On, on, when I'm on the road, I'm all, I always find myself in a vulnerable position as a cyclist. Either I need a place to sleep, either I need some water, I need food, I might need some directions, I might, you know, need to survive in one way or the other because I cannot travel longer distances, I cannot carry everything, I might need some repairs, I might need to hitchhike to the next stop and everything. I might not have money. Um, so being open, you know, we are humans, we like to imitate each other's emotions and each other's gestures. So being open, you know, if I am open to someone, the other person is also going to be open with me. So if you open yourself, approach other people, then you can expect that they would be also open with you. And once you have, you know, uh, 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 no ice between you, then basically you can form a relationship. Yeah. And also about not being open to the other people, but also being open to possibilities, to opportunities, to new ideas. This guy uh, was a uh, former champion of mustache in Turkey. And second lesson, it could also be the first lesson that there are more good people than bad people, you know. And uh, the, most of the concerns that come from travel are that, you know, people in that country might be dangerous, they might be, you know, unhelpful, but definitely there are more good people than bad people, and most people are going to help you than hurt you. But you got to put yourself in a vulnerable position to know that. Because if you are not in that position where you feel vulnerable, then why are you going to contact other people and ask for help? And if you haven't asked for help, you wouldn't know the meaning of help. You know? Simple thing like, you know, cold water. Sometimes you know, I'm cycling on the road and then it is desert, it is hot. Someone stops and hands me a cold water bottle. That's all I need. And I appreciate that a lot. So if you next time, if you see a cyclist in a very remote location, if you have a bottle of water or a banana or an energy bar, you know, give it to him or her, you know, it would be greatly appreciated. And you would also feel some sort of happiness inside you because the, the face of the cycle is going to lit up, literally. So you have to put yourself sometime in the vulnerable position and travel, you know, especially long travel, that puts you kind of in a vulnerable position. And then you will know that world is, uh, it is, it is not a hopeless place. This is uh, the proverb that I borrowed. I was looking through the books in, uh, in Grand Canyon. This slide number three, I used to call it be a student. But then when I read that proverb, I put that proverb here. That was an Indian proverb learn all the time, teach all the time. So here I'm sitting with two French people, so on my left and right, and then two people from Israel. And, uh, and we cycled together for a few days, and we talked about pretty much everything, about the conflicts, about friendship, about cycling, about Middle East, what is happening. <laughs> so in terms of travels, you know, meeting people is also what uh, what gives you the opportunity to learn from them. And whatever you learn from them, it is your first-hand experience. Make sure that you also don't keep all these experiences to yourself. Because it is also, it will be very selfish of me to go to all these places, take pictures, but keep it to myself. That's why, you know, my journey, this journey started as a personal adventure, but I was interested in photography. But then when I started posting pictures, I said that the pictures are not telling everything. You know, there's also back, background story to every picture. And, and I felt that it was my responsibility to document and share those experiences with others so that it's not only selfish. So this proverb, learn all the time and teach all the time. Keep it in mind. This guy also changed my life in a way. A French guy we met in, in a very unusual circumstances in Iran. 
um, and he was walking from France to I don't know where, but we met in Iran and he had walked from Paris in three years. And he asked me, Kamran, how much distance do you travel in a day? I said, maybe 60, 70, 80 kilometers. Um, he said, it's too much. I said, how much do you travel? He said, 10, 20 kilometers a day. He said, when you are going so fast, you know, you don't have the opportunity to look at the expressions of people and respond them back with a smile or first smile and then get their smile back or wave at them or listen to their, um, their greetings, maybe, you know. And he said, when I'm walking, I look at people, you know, if they're eating some, something, I would stop by sometime, they would invite me. So he said, slow down. 